sort of part two of my discussion on the uh, coronavirus. Um, the lesson learned socio and uh, psychologically from this isolation that China's creating, this quarantine, is that these people being under a lot of stress and knowing that they are not going to have access to everyday items that they're used to, being food, uh, and they're going to be questioning the um, edibility of this food. Is it safe, even, um, considering this virus jumped from animal sources to human sources and is rapidly jumping from human source to human source? Why could it not be a, a feasible idea that you could contaminate some food that's in the market and pass that on to another human? So I'm sure that's a question in their mind. But the way that pertains to us as preppers and as uh, just concerned citizens in general is that it is not beyond the means of our own government. Uh, and it would not be martial law, if you want to call it that. I don't see it as that. Uh, it would be a health crisis that would justify this. Uh, I could see them pulling something like this if it were to get out of control here in the U.S. also. Um, would be very easily uh, done in the name of uh, health safety measures. So with that in mind, at this point in time, you could really worry, uh, overly worry, about this coronavirus and not pay attention to the domino effects it could have in everyday commerce. So pay attention to that, everyday commerce. This might be a good time to... Uh, Maybe break into a, just a little bit of extra money and add a few little things that will uh, make your life easier in the event of uh, grocery stores running out of things because I'm sure people will start thinking about that and stocking up on things or transportation is limited a little bit um, because of whatever reason, you know, let's say quite a few people at some airport fly in and they have this and then they got to quarantine them and stuff like that. That might cause panic as far as, you know, products coming off of airplanes and then getting transferred to trucking industries, things like that. Uh, think about that. Don't just uh, get absorbed into the virus itself and how it's affecting people and get overwhelmed. Think about how it could affect other aspects of our, of our lives as Americans. Um, they could very well do that. Um, or at the very least... Uh, Dig around in your resources there and do your research and see how it's affecting the people uh, in China, uh, in Japan, um, Macau, I think it's Macau, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, are the places that I'm aware of at this point that have uh, things happening to people. Uh, governments tend to panic. Uh, local munic municipalities tend to panic uh, and hide information from the public, which totally screwed up because it just makes the situation worse. You know, people's imaginations run and people get uh, people can get violent. Uh, people can uh, hoard and then jack the prices up of everyday common products uh, to make an extra buck. They do it all the time. So think about these things. Pay attention. Uh, look at the uh, psychological and social aspects of uh, orgy events. I urge you to do that. Be safe out there. Use common sense. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer after you grab those grocery carts and, and other things. Just carry a little bottle around with you. That's what I do. And every time you leave a store or touch an item, uh, you know, you know, wash your hands with it. You know, that's that's about all you can do. Uh, if you see somebody coughing around you, um, run the other way. Basically, get out of the area. And uh, just keep an eye on yourself, the signs and symptoms, and make yourself aware of what they are. From what I understand, it's a uh, fever of 102 degrees or greater, uh, respiratory type issues. Um, it sounds pretty much like if you're getting the flu. You feel like you're getting the flu or pneumonia. Uh, that's something to get checked out. Uh, I don't know what the process is on how they do that, but uh, I'm sure the medical staff around this country are uh, gearing up for it and... Uh, Boning up on their knowledge and what they need to look for. And uh, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to go to a Med Express or a medical place and 
get checked out because it's better to do that and realize you don't have it than not know and infect your own family uh, and your own children and, and other people. Uh, and the incubation rate on this keeps changing from different sources that I've read. It's I've read it's been two days, and then I read it it's up to two weeks. So who knows? But be safe out there. Don't panic. You know, don't get all overwhelmed. Um, the only thing I personally would pay attention to is uh, laying a little more food and a little more supplies in to uh, your storage idea there in case uh, there's a run on whatever you might need in the storage because people panic. There is a disruption in the system. All right, this is uh, Adam. I am from Phase 1 Readiness, spelled Phase, the number one, dash Readiness. I am on YouTube. I am soon to be having a Facebook page and soon to be opening my Patreon web page where I will uh, discuss things in more detail and do more uh, specific items. All right, I just wanted to say this observation tonight. You guys be safe, uh, be alert, be aware, and uh, just take it all with a grain of salt. Simulate the information and don't panic. There's no reason for it. All right, you guys take care. Good night. And uh, phase one readiness out.